if you have constant chronic inflammation, you are setting yourself up for autoimmunity. Now, most people have heard of autoimmune disease, but what you may not know is that the rate of autoimmune disease is increasing significantly. In the past 30 years, there's been a 50% increase in the diagnosis of autoimmune disease. And one of the worst things about autoimmune disease is it can take years to get diagnosed. This is because the symptoms of chronic inflammation are very vague and it can be really hard to have somebody take you seriously. These symptoms are things like fatigue and headache and brain fog or not being able to concentrate, feeling confused or not having good coordination, having GI distress, being more irritable or depressed. And you can have symptoms like period changes and infertility and pregnancy loss. The list of chronic inflammation symptoms in my book spans for two pages, just to give you an idea of how many different things are tied to this chronic immune activation. The problem is if you go to your doctor and you say you have fatigue, very often we're dismissed. And I'm gonna give you some tips on how to handle this at the end of the episode. But I want you to realize that having your immune system constantly activated can lead to this autoimmunity. Autoimmune disease is when your body has usually some genetic predisposition and then there's some environmental trigger. So it's not just getting it from your mom, but also the world that you live in or the state of inflammation that turns this disease on in some people and not in other people. And this should show you that the most important time, in my opinion, is what I call the preclinical phase of autoimmune disease. This is where you might have these constant chronic inflammation symptoms, but nothing is turning positive on lab work, that world where everything is normal. This actually represents an opportunity of time where you can make an intervention in your life, you can change your exposures, and you can start to decrease your risk of developing a true autoimmune disease by reversing the inflammation spectrum. But what about your fertility? Well, if you think about those reproductive hormones like we've talked about in prior episodes, I talked about how the brain is sending out signals to your ovary and to your whole body. I like to think about the brain being that air traffic control center. But chronic inflammation is static on the radio, makes it a lot harder for your brain to interpret the true signals that your body is sending. This can cause your brain to not respond appropriately, to send out the wrong signals, or to just not listen altogether. If you can imagine, we want our brain to be able to properly interpret the signals that our ovaries are giving us. So this is a really big deal. And this is why lowering inflammation with each thing that you do can make a difference because if you're decreasing the static on that radio, there's a greater chance that the person on the other end or your brain can actually interpret what is happening and then your brain, ovaries, your whole body can respond appropriately. We know that higher systemic levels of inflammation can be associated with irregular periods, specifically longer cycles and longer follicular phase, which means delayed ovulation. You'll have lower pregnancy rates, higher miscarriage rates. And then there's a whole slew of reproductive disorders that are associated with inflammation. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS, endometriosis, adenomyosis. These are diseases where inflammation is part of the hallmark of why these diseases can become so problematic. And one of the reasons why IVF is sometimes treatment for things like endometriosis and adenomyosis, because IVF may be the only way we can truly change the environment because we're taking your eggs out of your body. Because if your body has this constant immune insult and you have this toxic inflammation building up, the only way to overcome that may be to change the environment significantly. So remember that constant immune activation, this chronic inflammation is really problematic. And that's why I wanna empower you with things that you can think about. When it comes to infertility, one thing that I hate is this diagnosis of unexplained infertility. What is unexplained infertility and why does it relate to inflammation? Because in my opinion, unexplained infertility is simply undiagnosed infertility. That's because it's not something that's easy to diagnose. It's not one of the top causes. When we're doing a fertility evaluation, the things that we're looking for include your anatomy, so your uterus and your fallopian tubes. We check to see if you're ovulating. We look at your ovarian reserve and we check male factors with a semen analysis. If all of those things are normal, yet you're still not getting pregnant, then you have graduated into this unexplained infertility category. I believe that a lot of unexplained infertility is truly due to chronic inflammation or inflammatory diseases. And there's literature to support this because endometriosis can be a top cause. 
Endometriosis is where your body has endometrial-like tissue outside the uterus. The endometrium is that lining that grows, and it grows in response to estrogen. And then when you have a period every month, you're bleeding off your endometrium. So it's hormonally responsive tissue that's supposed to be just inside your uterus. Well, if you have endometrial-like tissue outside your uterus, when you ovulate or have hormonal changes, estrogen is going to stimulate this tissue as well. Yet your body recognizes that this is not normal. It's not supposed to be in these locations. And your immune system gets activated to fight these endometrial tissue implants. What happens then is this chronic inflammation ensues that gets worse with every single ovulatory cycle that you have. For something like endometriosis, unfortunately, it's only diagnosed with surgery. So it's not something where I can do a blood test or I can know. There are some symptoms that can sometimes be suggestive, and these are typically inflammatory symptoms that revolve around pain. So painful periods, pain with intercourse, pelvic pain in general. But when I think about patients that I see with endometriosis, they often have so many of those chronic inflammatory symptoms as well. Things that we talked about earlier, like the fatigue, the bloating, the brain fog, just not feeling like themselves, especially around times of hormonal highs or lows because that tissue is responsive to the estrogen and progesterone changes. Endometriosis is just one example of something that can go into this unexplained infertility category that can be tied to inflammation. Well, I always like to talk about a case, and one case could be my own situation. So if you've been here for a while, you may know that I had four pregnancy losses before we were able to get pregnant with my two kids. And I talk about this really frequently on my channel. I went through the whole evaluation, had pregnancy losses, and my last year of residency and early in fellowship, and everything turned out normal. So I got into the lovely unexplained pregnancy loss category. I had doctors tell me it's just bad luck or just keep trying, you're young. I had people dismiss it saying you're just too stressed because of medical training. And none of that really made me feel like it was the answer. I felt like there was a true cause for why I was experiencing this. Well, when all the testing was normal and I was told just to keep trying, that really set me off on a course to dive deep into natural fertility and to really learn about our body and the world around us. And this is when I really started to learn about how inflammation plays such a crucial role in our ability to get pregnant and to stay pregnant. This, to me, really opened up my life, and I started making big changes to decrease inflammation in my world. Things like throwing out things in our kitchen, plastics and Teflon, changing the way that I ate, trying to remove anything that could cause inflammation, and learning to really listen to my body when it comes to movement and stress and sleep. Dietary changes impact us all differently, but when I got pregnant with my kids, I was eating a very plant-based, whole foods diet, high in fruits and vegetables, and I had cut out dairy and gluten. I have been vegetarian for a while before this, so at that time, I wasn't eating any meat. But I did end up getting pregnant right before we did IVF with some lesser aggressive treatment with Clomid. Now, with my two kids, they did great and carry on. Although years later, I ended up getting diagnosed with celiac disease. So it turns out that I had an autoimmune disease this entire time, despite being told that everything was normal. And my celiac disease contributed to my own pregnancy losses. And when I cut out gluten in an attempt to have less inflammation in my world, that's because I noticed that gluten made me feel more inflamed. When I looked at those chronic inflammation symptoms, for me personally, when I had gluten, they were worse. So I cut it out. I had no idea that eating gluten during those first four pregnancy losses was a major contributor to my inflammatory burden. Was it the sole reason why I lost every pregnancy? Probably not. But did it make it a lot harder? Absolutely. And was I gluten-free with the two pregnancies that became my kids? I was, and I didn't even know I had celiac at that time. For me, my recurrent pregnancy loss was my body's red flag. It was telling me that something was wrong. If I had listened to my body earlier and recognized all those signs of chronic inflammation that everybody else just brushed off, I would have been in a position to potentially make change earlier. And that's part of what I want you to be able to do. So for many people, inflammation may be the missing link if you're struggling either with your hormone balance or in your ability to get pregnant. And even when it comes to fertility treatments, things like IVF cannot override just your immune system because we still want 
you to get pregnant. Your eggs still grow in your body. So every small change that you can make makes a big difference. I often say that your fertility is much more than luck. It's actually the sum of many things, but some of these you can control, but nobody is talking about it. It's up to you to learn about your body and learn what you can do. 